Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 25 of the front dash build. In this video we're looking to take the recently constructed standby attitude indicator, we're going to bring it online, run a number of operation tests and then we'll implement it into the front dash frame. Let's buckle up. In the last two videos in this series, we took time to look closely at the design and then also the construction of this panel. After going through this process, we're now at the point we can look to run a number of tests on the completed panel that we now see before us. We'll now start by using the pitch trim knob and that will allow us to see how the miniature aircraft marker moves. A marginal amount of noise in its movement, it does cover the range that we need. With it secured in place, the jitter is largely gone and the movement's relatively smooth. This knob in the actual A10 you would pull to cage, because we're using a rotor encoder we will push it in this case, and we can see the LED is being used for the warning flag. I've used a number of LEDs now as warning flags within the front dash, and they've, they've worked well for me in in my various tests. It's now time to look at the rotation of the various axis. So we're just going to pull the nose of the aircraft up and go into a climb. Now we've just gone into a slight bank so let's just let's look to level that out. There we go. And then back into a dive. And what we're going to do now, we're going to roll the aircraft. Let's roll it over. And we'll level out again. Now at this point the aircraft's bled off quite a lot of speed, so what we'll do is we go into another climb and further decrease our speed. We'll roll the aircraft again, but as we're rolling we'll see a change in the pitch at the same time, so both axes are moving at the same time. So everything's moving along the various axes as needed and certainly running smooth enough and, and also in line with the sim. Pull up, pull up. Pull up, pull up. Also I did have to go to quite some lengths to build this panel, um, really from a time perspective, particularly when you think of the time it would take to build something like this when actually it's just a secondary instrument and one that's not so prominent in the front dash but I think it was definitely worth all of the effort and I'm really looking forward to getting this installed into the front dash frame. Before we do that we'll just have a look at a side view of this panel. On the left hand side we can see the main standby attitude indicator itself and all of the components at the rear. If we now start the data stream and we can see that that synchronizes itself to that of the position within the sim. We'll now make a few changes to the roll and the pitch of the aircraft. Separate to the standby attitude indicator itself, which is what we see on the left, on the right is effectively one overall bracket that holds in place all of the various PCBs that will drive it, and that will be mounted in place behind a UHF repeater. So at this point we're looking good with the various initial tests. We're now at the point that we can go ahead and mount the standby attitude indicator into place. And for the next step we can now put the UHF repeater back in place. 
Right then, let's move on to some tests and just check the, the mechanism and the movement of it and check it's all working as it should be. In this view we can see the main monitor of the simulator and also the hold of the front dash and this new instrument. If I bring up a zoomed in view of that instrument we can get a better view of that as we start to test it. And the best kind of test is one where we can do a slow movement of both axes at the same time. So we're now going to do a slow roll of the aircraft combined with a change in pitch. Yeah, and on the balance of all things, that looks pretty good. We'll now change to a rear view of the panel. We can see the movement here of the attitude cylinder and I think it really does highlight and show just how tight a space we were working to here. It rotates without coming into contact with the frame and without coming into contact with the spacers. At each 90 degree point, that being 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock, the corner of the attitude cylinder does extend beyond the footprint of this actual panel but that happens at the point in between the spacers. So we got that free movement, but at the same time we managed to get the biggest size of the, of the attitude cylinder that we, we possibly could. As we near the end of the video, we'll just take a moment to reflect on the panel. This definitely took a fair amount of time to produce, and as mentioned previously, it's just a secondary instrument. However, in undertaking it and installing it, and using it, I'm really glad I went to the lengths I did to get this in place because I feel it adds so much to, to the front dash. Always an important part for me is the learnings that I can take from any panel build. So this one definitely had a good number of learnings. It was a good step forward from the altimeter because we've gone from that to now two axis running at the same time within the one unit. I'm happy with the circumference of the attitude cylinder in terms of the number of marker lines you can see at a glance from top to bottom. Although a greater width would have been preferred, but as mentioned through the design process, given everything I was working to, what we have before us was the maximum size realistically that we could achieve at this point. The NEMA 8 lets the roll axis run really smoothly. The X27 style stepper for the pitch axis is sufficient for what we would need. I purposely ran some of these tests to try to show any judder that there was present and it did fare generally very well in that test. The icing on the cake for me for this panel is the implementation of the miniature aircraft marker and that this is mechanically driven, so therefore it can update in line with the sim. So overall, a really great addition to the sim pit, with a whole load of learnings. It's by no means perfect, but it is certainly more than sufficient for my needs. Before I power down, I think I'll do a little bit more instrument flying here and just whilst I'm enjoying the use of this panel, I'll start putting my thoughts onto the indicated airspeed panel, which will be the next one we'll be looking at within the series. Thanks for watching.